Do you also tend to avoid making decisions just for the fear of poor results, which might make you regret it later? Well, this is known as regret aversion bias. 80% of individuals don't change or churn their investments. It's not because of convenience. It is because of risk aversion. It might cause investors to stick onto poor assets for too long or to continue adding more funds in the hope of recovering losses and avoiding regret. आपने 2000.com बबल बर्स्ट या 2008 फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस के बारे में तो सुना ही होगा इन्वेस्टर्स हु लॉस्ट देयर मनी इन दीस क्राइसिस स्टिल टेंड टू हैव दिस बायस दस अवॉइडिंग द स्टॉक मार्केट और इक्विटीज कंप्लीटली इन फियर ऑफ लूजिंग मोर मनी लेट्स लर्न मोर अबाउट दिस बायस व्हाट आर इट्स स्ट्रेंथ्स एंड वीकनेसेस इन टुडेस एपिसोड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल वेलबीइंग 101 Hi I'm Anand Doctor I'm a finance professional I have been an investor right since I was uh, in school I've been in this profession now since 17 years as you can imagine I since I started investing early on I made tons and tons of mistakes and I learned from those mistakes thankfully I'm on a much better footing now in terms of my finances and my financial decision making it gives me a lot of uh, joy to extend that knowledge and help to other people to prevent them from making those same mistakes and that's what I uh, love uh, doing for people Let me give you my own example to make it very easy. So I'm a big time foodie. I love trying out different cuisines, new restaurants. Lockdown had just ended and there was this new restaurant that had opened in my area. So the very next Saturday, I took my family there instead of the regular place that they like. I had looked at that menu online and I thought it was going to be a superb, you know, experience. Unfortunately, after coming back from that place, everybody got food poisoning. So as you can imagine, the whole of next day was ruined and uh, it was a very painful experience. Of course, after that we kept going to the regular ones. Decided not to do any thing like that again 3 months later there was another restaurant that opened in my area all the reviews all the photographs the menu everything was looking superb and i really really wanted to go but do you think i went no i was too scared to go through the same experience especially for my family but also for myself so although i really wanted to go i did not even try it out so this is called regret aversion because i regretted the decision of going there the last time that's why i did, i was so afraid that the same pain will visit me again that i did not want to make that decision again and therefore i just stuck to what i knew and i did not try out anything new so this behavior that makes you avoid the pain that comes with making a mistake is called regret aversion so what it leads you to do is not make any decision about anything that you don't know so the example that i gave you about a restaurant or you can relate it to choosing a movie to watch or buying a which a particular brand's shirt now these are all examples which have a very limited impact on our lives even if you go wrong you can recover quickly and move on with your life but when it comes to our finances there are some very important financial decisions that we make and the impact is much much higher if you make a mistake it lives with you for a much longer time and the result is also much bigger whether positive or negative and therefore the fear of making that mistake is even bigger and therefore this bias plays out even more strongly when you are making financial decisions so the bias is uh, affect our behaviors right uh, and the decisions that we make sometimes they can help us sometimes not we are human beings we are emotional beings and a lot of the times the decisions that we make are not based on logic but on emotions uh, the emotion principally behind the uh, bias that we are talking about is fear now fear is like fire fire can be a very useful tool it gives us warmth it runs our cars it cooks our food but if the same fire is left uncontrolled it can burn down your house so fear is also similar so fear helps you from making uh, very risky uh, illogical decisions taking uh, you know uncalculated risks but at the same time unwarranted fear can also prevent you from doing things that you need to do so therefore it's very important to understand that that particular uh, you know that this fear is dictating your decision and therefore uh, analyze it Oh yes uh, I think there is an example every every day to give you a recent example uh, there's a client for whom we had recommended a certain amount of uh, life insurance cover although he had some old LIC policies the cover was grossly inadequate although he was paying a lot of premiums so we suggested a cheap term plan with a very economical uh, premium but adequate cover the amount uh, was 3 crores that was a cover that we had determined that he required based on his income expenses assets liabilities etc the client was agreeable he wanted to go ahead with it uh, we had given him five top companies options 
uh, with the comparison chart, uh, with the detailed analysis. One month passed, two months passed, three months passed, and in spite of repeated reminders, the client did not execute and tell us that yes, I've bought the policy. Finally, we did a sit-down meeting one-to-one -one and uh, just asked him what exactly the hesitation was. So finally, the client revealed that he was uh, not sure which out of these five would, have, would be the best option. And because he had never made a decision like this before, it was always his father who used to make these financial decisions. He was very scared of choosing the wrong company. So then we realized that giving options to someone like him at this stage is actually preventing him from making a choice. So we took away the choice and just gave him one choice saying this would be a good option for you. Why didn't you go for it? And then he went for it. So just the fear of making a mistake was preventing him from making an important decision. Now, if God forbid, within those three months, if something had happened, if he had been in an accident or something and he had expired, his family would have been left without cover, right? So he was leaving a very important decision and not moving forward just because of this fear of making a mistake. First of all, most of us don't even realize that these biases exist. Even if we know about them and we've read up about them, it's very difficult to identify those biases in ourselves. These are like blind spots. So you know there might be certain blind spots on the road, but you can't see them yourself, which is why they are called blind spots, right? Which is why you need a warning sign that this is coming up ahead. So similarly, you need somebody else. It's easy to spot somebody else's bias instead of spotting your own bias. So what you need is a second opinion, ideally from someone who's an expert in that particular subject matter that you're dealing with. And ideally somebody who has had many, many hours of experience with many, many people so that he has had enough practice to identify those biased behaviors. It's difficult to do it on your own, but if one, one, one were to try, uh, one thing that I think has helped me and some of my clients is uh, just writing things down. So when you clearly, instead of just thinking and feeling things, if you write them down in a piece of paper, for example, if you're trying to make a call whether I should do this or not, just write down all the pros and cons. So once you've done that, you're able to look at it more rationally and you're able to make a more rational decision, a more logical decision, rather than just being driven by one of those points in the list which is driving your emotions but if you're still not able to uh, do it yourself then it's always safer to go to someone else and take their help because it's always easier to see the mistakes others are making rather than you so there's nothing wrong with having biases every individual in this world has biases I, I have those biases definitely the trick is to remember when making any important decision that these biases exist. We may not be able to catch those biases. We may not be able to deal with those biases successfully on our own. So another example is uh, the fear of missing out. Uh, logically, you may think that something is not necessarily good. You don't want to invest in that particular thing. But since everybody around you is doing that and you are the only person who is looking like you are the only one who's left out, right? You have this fear that every if everyone is doing and I'm the only one not doing, then I'm being you know someone uh, outside the bracket and you don't want to do that because later on if that thing works then everybody is going to think they are successful and there's something wrong with you why you didn't do it so because of that fear and you don't want to miss out that fear of missing out uh, you end up doing things like for example uh, one of my clients who has absolutely zero knowledge about cryptos and uh, always thought that it's very risky to invest in them uh, did not understand them and did not want to invest in them because everyone in his whatsapp group and of, of his college was investing and he was the only one being left out of the discussion not even for the financial gain but just to be a part of that discussion and not being left out he went ahead and invested in cryptos and he invested through an exchange that he didn't know and the exchange itself shut down and he lost his all uh, the fear is making you do things even when you know that you don't want to do them and that they are not the ideal things for you to do so in a single sentence regret aversion or regret avoidance is an attempt to make sure that whatever decision you're making today does not come back to create pain for you later on when you realize that it's a mistake